This is Noah with Automus, and I'd like to show you a quick demo in this video of a way to dynamically deploy an operating system and applications to a client machine, like a desktop or a laptop, all using Orchestrator combined with Configuration Manager 2012, the Microsoft Deployment Toolkit, and SharePoint as a request front end. Just briefly, the scenario we have in mind here is something that a lot of IT techs are familiar with. When they're deploying a new machine, a new laptop or desktops for the users, they either have a one-size-fits-all image that has all of the applications on it, perhaps, or maybe they have a way that they can deploy during the task sequence. They can select a bunch of different applications that they've been told that the user should have access to. There are other ways as well, but this scenario and this example shows a way to get away from that type of deployment. Um, specifically, what we want to have happen is we want the technician who's building the machine to really not have to do much of anything in the way of data entry. So there's no room for errors or miscommunications with the build. Um, and we also want to have a way for a user-friendly request to be submitted for the deployment. We don't want to define the application list inside of the task sequence in Config Manager. Rather, we'd like to do some do something like a SharePoint request where we can just simply pick from a list of applications and submit that. And this allows us to have a person who doesn't even have access to Configuration Manager, perhaps, define the deployment request and pick the applications. And then the technician comes along and builds it for them. So with that context, let's jump into the demo and see what that looks like. We'll start off here in SharePoint, which you can imagine as the company portal or the IT portal I've defined a list called device deployment requests. And what this does is to allow us to submit a new request for a new deployment to happen. Say we need a new laptop for a new employee coming on board. If I open up a new item, you can see there are several fields here, but the only thing that I need to do as the person who's submitting this, and I may be in IT, I may not be actually, all I have to do is know which of these applications I want to install. So let's say that I know two of these should be given to this new user, given their role. And then that's it. All I have to do at this point is save. And what happens is a new item is created that represents our requests. And then it's given an ID automatically, as all SharePoint items do. This is the ID that we hand over to our technician who does our builds. And he'll plug that in to his uh, task sequence experience. Um, that will kick off a series of events in the background transparently that will come back to this request, get that list of software that we just chose, and install that during the build, um, all without any interaction or input from the technician himself. So let's actually go over now and take a look at that process. And here I am in the task sequence wizard, having booted into Windows PE on a new machine, getting ready to lay down the image on it. This is just a normal task sequence. It's actually an MDT task sequence. And if we select the MDT orchestrator option here, that's going to do um, a few extra things for us that normal task sequence wouldn't do. It's going to go ahead and far format and partition the desks and do a few other things. And in a few minutes, we'll see the UI appear to put in our new deployment ID for our request. And here's the wizard that I'm prompted with. If you recall, we submitted our request and we got the ID 17 back as the deployment ID. And I'll just input the name of the person who's deploying this machine for record keeping purposes. And then simply submitting that, the rest of the task sequence now gets kicked off. And if we look behind the scenes at what's happening, the task sequence has actually called over to Orchestrator and started this runbook called Validate Deployment Request. What this request does is it goes out and looks up the request from SharePoint using that ID that we put in. It makes sure that everything is good with it. It also generates for us a unique host name in the domain. So we always have a good computer name to deploy with. And then we go ahead and create an MDT record in the MDT database so that that record is going to have our list of applications, our computer name, and that's what the task sequence is going to go ahead and query to run the rest of its um, deployment. 
And here in the MDT deployment workbench tool, we can see that there is a new record created, and this is what Orchestrator created for us. If we open it up, we can see that it's described as the computer record for 17, which is what I did. It's also collected as MDT does the various um, identifiers for the machine that's currently being created. Um, the name that we generated with Orchestrator is going to be down here in the computer name and OST computer name fields. That was PC10 because we've had everything from PC1 through PC9 already in existence, so PC10 was the next available. And then our application list should show those two applications that we chose in SharePoint. Now they're in MDT as the list that's going to get dynamically installed during the task sequence in this order. So while this example only does the applications, as you can see with MDT, you can also do package installation as well. That could easily be added into the example, but to keep it simple, I just did applications here. And this will take about 15 minutes or so for the image to get applied and the applications to get installed. And then when the deployment completes, we'll come back and take a look at what the outcome was. And fast forwarding to the future, our deployment is now complete. If we look at the summary, we're actually fast forwarding 18 minutes into the future. The machine name that was given and installed was the name that was generated by Orchestrator. It joined the domain as we would expect. Um, it installed the operating system that we expect. Most importantly though, we do have applications being reported as being installed according to that list that we originally submitted in the, in the request in SharePoint. So these two should be in there. The little icon showing a warning is as far as I know, just a bug in MDT in this summary view that I've always seen uh, appear even though that the applications get installed successfully. So I'm not really sure what's going on there, but let's go ahead and get into Windows and just make sure that they are in fact there. And logging into Windows, we do see that Adobe and Google Chrome happen to be installed, which is good. Uh, so that was what we wanted. Now, let's go over to take a look at what actually got recorded as a result of all this back in the request. So the person who submitted the request originally, how do they know that this is done and get some information back about what happened? Back in the SharePoint list, if I come in here and I just refresh my view, I should see that things change a little bit here. First of all, uh, the computer name that was chosen is now populated in. We've also got a status of complete, whereas when it started out, it was new. We've also got that name that I entered in the deployment wizard back here so we can know who was it that actually deployed that machine. If I actually open this up, there's a few more things to look at. The make, model, and product of the hardware are recorded here. I was using a virtual machine to do this demo. And we can also see that we have some details for the status. And helpful for technicians in particular, I think, is all of the logs that got created during that deployment, usually those get stuck on the machine in WinPE, but with MDT, those can be brought out to a, a simple share. So this got populated in here as a hyperlink. And if I just open that up, you can see that it comes in and we can get all of our logs for, for the task sequence itself. So all the SMSTS log, and variants and all of the MDT script logs are in here. So all the ZTI um, logs there. So if anything had gone wrong, if the status ended up as failed, then we could have come in here and used this to troubleshoot, which is a really nice thing to have. Just to wrap up, let's take a look at a diagram that shows what just happened. In the upper left, we have somebody submitting a request for a new deployment. And that request in turn is generated with a new deployment ID that serves as a record locator going forward. So that could be handed off to a third party. We have a, a, another person down in the right here that's gonna do the actual deployment. It could be the same person as well. Um, SharePoint then serves as that record keeping system for us. In, in addition to whatever other logs and data we have, if we wanna expose this data as something useful for the business, it helps to have it in SharePoint or something similar for that. Um, Orchestrator is at the center and it's doing the work of integrating these different systems together. It's bringing together MDT, it's bringing together Configuration Manager 2012, and the task sequence client itself that's getting deployed. All of that can 
behave or, or function as a cohesive system in this process by virtue of the fact that orchestrator is in the middle doing some handoff and uh, integration stuff. So I hope that makes sense. Um, if you want to try to get this working in your environment, I've included all the downloads and detailed instructions about how this works and how to get it uh, set up. And of course, you can always reach out and get help if you run into issues. So thanks for watching.